Hello everybody, I'm just going to show a few so-so vinyl finds from the charity shops. This is the Jazz of Tears. Now I think it's a really quite a good record actually. Uh, it's a sort of post-punk kind of thing. A uh, small melody, a really strong vocalist. Unusual record in some ways, but really, I guess rough trade, really, really quite good. Um, but it's got to have the worst insert I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, you pull it out and you think, oh, it's a one-sided insert, okay, I can live with that. And you turn it over, and that's it. So all that expense, just for that blurb. Let's put a whole extra sheet of paper in there, and they just printed it on what already is a very sparse cover. Interesting record, it's quite a cheap thing to pick it up, it's, it's worth checking that out. Some really good stuff on that. <clears throat> this is Wipeout, No Sweat. 19 whatever it is, 1983. You see it's Mod Revival. Um, but they're very... I mean, it's a bit like the Yardbirds, a bit like not the small faces so much, but those sorts of bands, if the whole album has that kind of feel. Uh, quite melodic in places, uh, quite catchy, but also, again, some really strong playing, some out records. Quite an unusual thing, it's a, a local band uh, to the southeast of England, the Midway in Kent. Not something you see every day, it's, not, it's quite a pricey record now, you know, 40 or 50 quid. Some good songs on it, strong material. The last song, I'll call it a song, <laughs> uh, lets the album down big time. It's like a bluesy thing. There are a couple of bluesy things, as you'd get on a lot of old 60s albums. But to end an album on a long, sort of bluesy workout, which it doesn't go anywhere, it just really flat. They should have just scrapped it and took it off. Because up to that point, a uh, very good record indeed. This is Squarehead Stomp by the Kaisers. Unfortunately, there weren't any others of this uh, this band. I did a few albums. This is 1993. And you can see they're into the rockabilly and stuff. Um, very strong. Again, another strong record. Um, this is all in Imperial. Oh, I've given it that kind of look. Yeah, very good. They did a few albums, like I say, and uh, when you sample of those albums, they're all really good. Really tough kind of sound, you know. Would have been perfect if the era, uh, in the era. Rockabilly. Uh, just, you know, what can you say? I'm <laughs> just rushing through these. This was a nice find. It's a mono sleeve, but a stereo record, unfortunately. And it's torn, you know, that. on Fontana, you see it hasn't got the S here. I'd like to have heard the mono. I've, it happened a lot in the 60s, though. So there was a lot of mono sleeves, and a lot of them had stickers over. Stereo records were sort of new at the time, so we'd use mono sleeves. Uh, I don't think it's a perfect album. A lot of people say this is a great psychedelic record. I don't think it is. I think it's okay. I've never really thought this is one of the greatest psychedelic albums of the 60s at all. Um, there's a little bit of country vibe here and there, so it puts me off. And then maybe some of the tracks, the last track, Grace, Section 43, they don't really go anywhere or do anything, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But, you know, it sounds nice, But um, and I've known this album for many years, but I've never really thought it's... It's all that. But a nice find for a quid. <laughs> uh, any more for any more, Ronnie Lane and the band Slim Chance. Again, it's quite a scarce record nowadays. It's getting harder to come by his stuff. There's a country kind of rock vibe to it. Um, this is on GM, it's a very nice label. But 
And it's, it's a nice list of allowance. One or two slight clunkers, if you like, but nothing which mars the album that much. It's just a, a strong album, pleasant, but nothing uh, to get too excited about. <laughs> this is for passage. You can see it's got a rippling cover here. Uh, Pin Drop, first album from 1980. This is like a minimal synth, post punk minimal synth mainly. Uh, really, you know, as with all of this stuff, quite amateurish sounding at times, but at the same time, some, some of it is really excellent. You know, sometimes when you get people who are just starting out or that kind of amateurish, like bands like Wire and whatnot, and Joy Division, you know, they, they said they quite openly admit they couldn't necessarily play their instruments. Um, very well um so it kind of limits you but it, it constrains you in a good way if you've got the creativity and you know that's true for this as well very nice minimal synth album there's some nice pieces on here a couple of really good instrumentals locust uh it's a really great instrumental uh beginning of side two very good Um, this course is XDC. My mind is going blank. <laughs> blank C. <laughs> Black C. Never really followed XDC when I have heard their stuff. I didn't. I didn't really click with it. But you know, this is a quid. It's an original. A virgin. And as the insert, etc. But uh, yeah, I listened to this for a while. <laughs> it's just really good. And I can see why people wax lyrical about. I really liked what I heard on that. You know, I'm not going to go into detail here. It's an original copy of Japanese Whispers. Uh, the Cure, just no, November 82, November 83 singles. You know, three of these tracks were released again on the Standing on the Beach. But it's nice to hear these all together in a really well pressed record um, without spending a fortune on the singles. But they do sound a little bit samey after a while, you know, to my ear anyway. I see it's his lyrics and his, not his lyrics, his vocal melody lines, which are sort of similar. The music might be quite different, but his voice sort of remains consistent, which gives the sound, some of the songs a samey sort of feel. Quickly rush through Nash for Slash. This is on Ralph. This is a compilation with six different remix tracks plus two others from earlier uh, albums. So you can't get them anywhere else in this format. You know, million year picnic. And it's on Ralph for a reason, because that kind of minimal synth, quirky, almost snake finger like at times. Um, just out there on the edge, new wave. I really like it. It's kind of got that kind of low fi, low key feel. But very catchy. Here's another Nash for Slash. And you thought you were normal. This is on Cutthroat Records. We look at this lineup. David Allen, uh, Long Hello, Mother Gone, and Nashville Teen. Again, okay, another one, a good one. Two more. This is uh, the covers a bit worn. Suicide second album. Original, these are all about a pound each. I've known this on, I'd never pay 30 or 40 quid for this. Um, I've known it on CD for many years, but I don't really rate it as an album. I think the first couple of tracks on each side are fantastic, and but then they sort of, yeah, just doesn't hit it, kind of doesn't cut it as much as that first album for me. And, you know, it's a little bit limited in that kind of range and the tracks don't really take off. Get a bit boring at a couple of points, which I, mean, I love minimal synth stuff. But yeah, not strong, but worth it just for the first two on side one. Diamond Fur Coat, Champagne and Mr. Ray. Now finally, this is a great record. City Walls, a Southampton compilation. This is actually um, on White Elephant, which was produced the record label just to put these bands, get them out there in the public eye. 
and this band opens and motifs. I mean, the tracks that they've produced here, brilliant. They do, there's a single which you can get by them, which is not available, these aren't here. Um, that's about a hundred odd pound single, and rightly so. This is mainly mm, post punk, new wave, uh, nothing really punky on here. A um, couple of instrumentals, uh, synthesizer, you know, really good analog synth. That's not really a bad song, it's just one a little bit weaker. But you can see the different bands, you've got two tracks by each, so you've got Vertical Motion, Almost Cruelty, Exploding Seagulls, The Point Fives, Inferior Complex and Games to Avoid. Not the catchiest names by any means. But that's a really, really strong compilation, I really recommend you check that out. Um, and what I like about it, unlike that first Jazz of Tears thing, <laughs> this has really good you know, uh, inserts. It has a nice little photocopied band sign up, pictures, and you get uh, a key with all the numbers. But, uh, and here they all are, and tells you which bands they are when you check out the numbers, and you can match them to their outlines. And on the back, a nice little kind of blurb. It's quite a rare album, that one. Um, you know, 40 quid, something like that. A uh, very nice, unusual find. And I really do like that kind of stuff when you find a minimal synth and those sorts of local bands, uh, those compilations. That is very strong. Anyway, that was it. Um, racing through. <laughs> that may have been one or two records you like the look of, though, I don't know. But I'll see you all soon anyway. Cheers.